Violence in the mining sector uh, is not unique to uh, the gold industry, but in the last couple of years has centered around uh, uh, gold mining, uh, where artisanal miners have been actively engaged across the country uh, uh, in uh, gold production, but have been preyed upon by gangs euphemistically referred to as machete gangs. It's a symptom of a wider breakdown within the industry, uh, a fundamental lack of regulation and policing, uh, and of course uh, indicative of uh, some of the patronage politics that continues to plague Zimbabwe's economy and prospects for economic recovery as uh, machete gangs in some areas have been linked to local politicians uh, pushing particular interests uh, in, in, in those areas. You know, there is a calculation in some people's minds that the cost-benefit of employing violence uh, works in their particular interests. And so that's one of the reasons we see this playing out within the mining sector, as we said, symptomatic of a range of other issues. But certainly, this is not unique uh, to the mining sector. Uh, but given the centrality of the mining sector, in prospects for economic recovery. It is clearly critical that this issue get addressed properly and in many respects is a litmus test uh, for the prospects of reform in Zimbabwe. So in Zimbabwe there is a lot of competition between industrial miners, large-scale mining companies, and artisanal miners, men and women who mine with very little technology. And there are a number of reasons for this, but one thing that spurs it on is patronage. So within Zimbabwe, a number of actors, uh, from the lowly police officer to very high up in government, are benefiting from this competition. So industrial and artisanal miners are faced with a choice. Do they play along with this patronage game and try to outmaneuver one another, or do they voluntarily cooperate? So going along with this patronage game is a dangerous game because patronage in Zimbabwe is very fickle. One day you're the government's darling and the next day you're out. So the better option for both of them actually is to voluntarily cooperate. They actually have a number of shared interests, an interest in stability, an interest in earning a livelihood, and on the part of the industrial mining companies to exploit those parts of their mining concessions that they cannot commercially viably mine in an industrial manner. The government of Zimbabwe also has a role to play in this, should it choose to do so, primarily by giving artisanal miners legal standing under the mining law.